this is Dusty Jones. Uh, I'm here to talk about counting and adding factors. Some new number theoretic functions here. To start off, uh, to make sure we're fresh, uh, I'd for, like you to find the factors of 18 and determine how many there are. I'd also for like you to find the factors of 144 and determine how many there are there. Please pause the video and do that and then come back and we'll keep going. The factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Uh, its prime factorization is 2 times 3 squared. Since it has two different prime numbers as factors 2 and 3, we can make an array of uh, powers of 2 and 3, starting with the 0 power and going up to the power that's found in the prime factorization. So 2 goes to the first power and 3 goes to the second power. If you look inside this multiplication table, you notice the factors show up there, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And there are a total of 2 times 3, or 6 factors. Now the 2 comes from the 2 rows, and the 3 comes from the 3 columns. It actually has nothing to do with the particular primes that are being used there. The prime factorization of 144 is 2 to the 4th power times 3 squared. So I'd like for you now to make an array of powers of 2 and 3, again starting with the 0 power and going up to the powers in the prime factorization. When you get done, you should have five rows if you put two on the rows, and three columns if you put three at the column headings. Why does this tell us that 144 has 15 factors? Also, do any of the factors in the array repeat? You'll find they don't. Will they ever repeat for a different number? The answer is no, they won't. And that's because each place has different powers of 2 and 3. And so f therefore all those numbers will be different. In general, we can say it if a number A has a prime factorization p1 to the k1 power times p2 times to the k2 power times p3 to the k3 power all the way up to some nth prime with some exponent k sub n. All those different p's are different primes in the factorization uh, and all those exponents with subscripts mean is that k1 is the power that goes with p1 and k2 is the power that goes with p2 so on. From this if we made some sort of array uh, for p1 we would have k1 plus 1 rows. That's because we add in the zero power and for the second prime we would have k2 plus one of those rows and if we went through all of the exponents added one and then multiplied all of that together that would give us the total number of factors of the number a please take a moment and determine how many factors 30 has and how many factors 10,140 has. 30 we could easily do by hand. 10,140 maybe not. Um, also, as a related question, what are the factors of 30? And what are the factors of 10,140? The tau function, tau of a, is the number of positive factors of a. S tau of 18 is 6 because 18 has 6 different positive factors. Tau of 30 is 8 because there are 8 different factors of 30. What is tau of 144? Another number theoretic function is the sigma function. Sigma of a is the sum of the positive factors of a number. So sigma of 18 is the sum of the factors of 18. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 18 equals 39. Sigma of 30 is the sum of those 8 factors of 30, which is 72. What is sigma of 144?
I'd like for you to make a table of values for tau and for sigma uh, where a goes from 1 to 20. After you've made that table, I'd like for you to look at where a was a prime number and determine if you have a prime number, what is tau of that prime number? What is sigma of that prime number? Could you come up with a formula for that? Here's the table that you should find. Hopefully you did this on your own before looking at this. You should have found that if p is a prime number, then tau of p is 2. There are two factors, 1 and p. Sigma of p is the sum of those, 1 plus p. What if the number's not prime? I'd like for you to find tau of a and sigma of a for a few special cases where it's a prime to a power. So 3 to the 4th power, 5 to the 3rd power, 2 to the 6th power. Go ahead, pause the video now and, and work on that. You should have found that if p was a prime number and k was a whole number, then tau of p to the k is k plus 1. And sigma of p to the k is 1 plus p plus p squared plus p to the third all the way up to p to the k power. The factors of p to the k are all these different powers of p. If we want a formula for sigma of p to the k, we can notice that if we multiply the left and the right hand side by p, we get p times sigma of p to the k is p plus p squared plus p cubed all the way up to p to the k plus 1 power. And now if we take this second statement and subtract the first statement, we get p times sigma of p to the k minus sigma of p to the k is p to the k plus 1 minus 1. The p, p squared, p to the third power, all the way up to p to the k, subtract out. If we factor on this left hand side, we get sigma p to the k times p minus 1 equals the right hand side, p to the k plus 1 minus 1. And therefore another formula for sigma of p to the k is p to the k plus 1 power minus 1 in the numerator divided by p minus 1. Both tau and sigma are multiplicative functions, which means that if we have a being some number that has a prime factorization given here, um, then tau of that number is to find the tau values of each prime to power and multiply those together. So k sub 1 plus 1 times k sub 2 plus 1 times k sub 3 plus 1 all the way up to k sub n plus 1. For sigma of a, we find sigma of each prime factor to a power and then multiply those together. The proper divisors or proper factors of a number a are those divisors that are less than the number a. So what I'd like for you to do is prime, find the proper divisors of 15, of 19, and of 24. The proper divisors of 15 are the factors of 15 that are less than 15. So therefore, the proper divisors of 15 are 1, 3, and 5. Find those for 19 and 24. A new function, but are related to sigma, is sigma star of a. And it's going to be the sum of just the proper divisors. So the sigma star of 15 would be 1 plus 3 plus 5, which is 9. I'd like for you to determine the relationship between sigma star of a and sigma of a. Perfect numbers are those numbers where the number itself is equal to the sum of the proper divisors. 6 is a perfect number since its proper divisors are 1, 2, and 3 and if we add those together we get the number 6. In symbols we would say a is perfect if and only if sigma star of a is equal to a. 
a number is deficient if the sum of the proper divisors is less than a number. Eight is deficient. Its proper divisors are one, two, and four, which add to seven, and seven's less than eight, so we say it's deficient if sigma star is less than the number we have. On the other hand, a number is abundant if the sum of proper divisors is greater than the number. So 24 is an abundant number. The sum of the proper divisors of 24 is 36, which is greater than 24. And so we say a number A is abundant if and only if sigma star of A is greater than A. A related idea to these things is an idea of amicable numbers, a pair of numbers A and B. They're called amicable, which is another word for friendly. Uh, if sigma star of A equals B and sigma star of B equals A.